to make a buck. Help from Congress, really no such luck. It's really only that that causes all the strife. No one really knows how it's really gonna go. First the suckers frown, then it really gets you down. Don't forget to smile, it'll be a long while. Hey, how are you doing? This is Rick Keppel. I'm calling from DRJ Studio LLC. I'm calling up to call, ask about CBD oil. Do you know anything about that? Oh, uh, not a ton. Yeah. It, it is a complicated subject. There, there's not. A, it's a complicated subject. Um, yeah, a lot of outlets uh, probably sell it in uh, in a manner that is uh, in excess of what state law permits. Um, you know, I mean, there's, it's definitely a complicated subject. So, I'm a, um, so I'm if a, you've got inquiries and you have specific questions that you're wanting to present to our office, and then that our, either our office would answer or we would answer it through the Department of Health. Uh, yeah, I've already talked to, to the, I've already talked to those to folks. If you submit an inquiry on this, you would submit that inquiry in writing. Just make sure you have the specific questions that you're wanting to bring to our office, and then we will... Um, we will respond accordingly from there. You say you've already received a response from the Department of Health, or? I already talked to HHS S today. Having no job really can be tough. Make no money makes your life so rough. Looking for work just to make a buck. Help from Congress really knows us luck. All I can speak to is the CBD oil program that we have here at the Department of Health and Senior Services. We can answer questions about CBD oil, but we do need you to put it in as a media request to our OPI office. Okay, so you just and I can tell also me this. refer you to. I'm sorry. Well, um, but let answer this. Is it legal? I can refer you to some Missouri statutes regarding hemp oil. No, but um, you, you can't actually say right now definitively that, uh, that definitively CBD to my oil knowledge, is CBD legal. oil is only allowable for those with intractable epilepsy per statute 192.945, and there are only two facilities that have been licensed to produce it through the Department of Agriculture, and the statute for that is 261.265. Marijuana is what it was yesterday. Marijuana is what it was yesterday. Marijuana is what it was yesterday. Afternoon of August 19th on a Sunday. And we're in the DRJ Studio LLC near Richland, Missouri, talking with Mark Shanklin. Is that correct how to spell it, how to pronounce that? Yep. Mark, um, it's great to meet you and um, talked with you a lot, uh, quite a bit on Facebook. Um, now, KDSK TV reported that on December 5th, you, um, 2017, you lost a case with the Missouri Supreme Court for growing 300 marijuana plants in 2015. Was that in your basement? It was in my house. Okay, in your house. Um, so it must have been a lot of fresh air then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you were using it for yourself or what? I was convicted for conspiracy, conspiracy to distribute. Okay. We'll just leave it at that. Um, 300 plants. You took it to the Missouri Supreme Court because you said you were farming. Much like you would in a greenhouse or something, right? Pretty much. Um, were you thinking at the time that you were actually growing a crop? Of course. Okay. So it was like uh, any other business? Sort of like any other agricultural crop. Right. Except it's one of the oldest agricultural crops known to man. Cannabis. Marijuana. Cannabis. And at the end of this month, end of August, hemp farming becomes legal, correct? As I re recall. Uh, I haven't really kept up too much with the hemp part of it because it's, I'm not a big hemp fan. Yeah, it's uh, for industrial uses, largely. H hemp, what we call hemp today really, it was, what we call hemp today was invented or 
bred in the 19, late 1960s. Before that, anything grown, any cannabis grown would today be considered marijuana. Delbert Dell Mac McKinnon. At your service. Rockabilly Hall of Fame. In Take person. Two. My fault. In person. Hello. Okay. Again. Delbert, you started out in your music business with your dad and your grandpa. Right. That would have been what year were you born? Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven, the same year that they and, made marijuana and, illegal. Coincidental. But you played on the river boats with your dad and your grandpa? No, I played at the lake on the river boat all right, but not with them. I played some clubs and people's houses with my, uh -huh. with my grandpa and my dad. They used to go to the houses, their houses and play music. Wow. So you were invited to people's parties like or something? Private right. parties? Right. Pretty much the way that they do now. Well it's it's all right, you know. Yeah, They're making it work. Yeah. And you made fairly good money at the time, right? Well, good money at that time wasn't very much money. <laughs> yeah, it was about, what, 30 cents an hour or something like that? Yeah, you, if you was lucky, yeah. 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 So, Everybody did a lot of freebies back then. So if you were making $100 a day or something like that, and everybody else was making 30 cents an hour, you were living pretty high on a hog. Right? I guarantee you. Yeah. Yeah, use it to the top of the ladder. Yeah. Did your, you said once that your grandfather, um, or your great grandfather smoked marijuana for pain? My grandpa. Okay, was that um, just wild grown marijuana? I don't know. I think he probably grew it himself, you know, back in those days. Uh, they've been using that stuff a lot longer than people think they have. They always have been using it for, for medicinal purposes. I can't even say it. <laughs> medicinal purposes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, the old timers used to always have a roots in their pocket of some kind, different roots, uh, medical stuff, you know. Yeah. The old timers did that away. Now I remember my my own dad talking about it, but that back in the old days there was it much arthritis, it was called rheumatism, and all you did was you reached over, grabbed a leaf off of a... Or some kind of root. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, the old timers, they knew what to take for everything was wrong with you. <laughs> right. I guess they got it from the Indians, you know. You think that times are starting to switch back to your good old days now? Oh, yeah. Especially it, with the old it, deaths? That's Everything repeats itself, you know, not exactly the same, but it comes, it rolls around again. Yeah. I think. Um, some would argue that if you can't make a plant illegal, if you can't make a plant legal, then logically you can't make the same plant illegal either. Well, it's a plant. It should be able, if you want to eat it, eat it, you know, but if you want to. I don't want to be the one that tells people what to do, and I'm not, you know. Yeah. But when it comes to stuff like that, you know, everybody's got their own mind that they got to make up. Do you mind discussing your leukemia that you have? You're 81 now, and you're treated as a veteran at a VA. Yeah. You have leukemia, correct? Yeah. Among other things, <laughs> I got a spot on my left lung, too. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, well, I just found it out, you know. I uh, read a UCLA report that said that um, marijuana is supposed to prevent and treat lung cancer and lung infections. and. But I don't believe the uh, research is complete 
of those things. They need to continue with the research, don't you think so? Uh, well, sure do, and, and I'll say they'll be researching and working with it for the next hundred years, you know, like you do it for everything else, you know. Somebody will be checking. That's the way I look at it. And it usually, well, people's inquisitive. Yes. They want to know. And I'm, I want to know, you know, too. If it'll kill me, I want to know. If it'll kill you, if you got something wrong, I want to know too. Well, back in your day when you were born, they made it illegal state by state as they are making it legal now, correct? Yeah, what was the person that saw the, the big, big wig back was, then? Was it Harry Anslinger? No, the one that got rid of, the, brought back whiskey and stuff like that. You know, it used to, you couldn't drink it, you know? Yeah. What was his name? I have no idea. <laughs> well, when, they, when they brought the whiskey back, they had to make money somewhere or another to pay the officers. So, marijuana was next in line, you know? And they wanted to mess with the Mexicans anyway, so there it was, you know? But back in that time, did it they have some problems with farming, dust bowl and things like that? Well, so the government probably wouldn't have put much help into marijuana farming if um, there wasn't much profit in it for the average working man. Do you think? Well, I think I don't think they should have went from one, as you say, burying one and going to another one. You know, that's what they tried to do, bury uh, pot. You know. I think it was helping people, you know, probably, you know, if you think it helps you, usually it is, you know. I think a lot of it has to do with your mind, too. <laughs> yeah. Well, as they say, if it helps people, the government will probably make it illegal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if it helps them, if they make enough money on it, it will be, it won't be, it'll be legal. Yeah. You I hate to that. say it, but money is the root of all evil. Oh Maybe. yeah, but that's probably what's driving marijuana legalization right now. Greed, don't you think? Money. Yeah, because if people cared, they would have cared before, don't you think? Isn't that reasonable to, to figure out that if they cared now, why did it? They care before. Money. <laughs> Money. No. <laughs> This is why you're at Rockabilly Hall of Fame, because you're a genius. Yeah. You just find the answer, like that. <clears throat> yeah, that's why I like hanging around with you, Delbert. You're smart. Thank you. Thank you. I wish I was a lot smarter. But everybody's got problems. Yeah. And I got problems of my own. <laughs> but aren't you the gentleman that if a poor person has a great song and wants to record, you'll do it for free? Oh yeah, I've done that a lot. Yeah. If it's a good song, you know. I don't care how they sing it, if it's a good song, it's a good song. Yeah. Because there's always good singers and they're always looking for material, you know, looking for songs. Well, if they find something that's good, they don't care who wrote it. They'll pay them a little bit of money, but not much, you know. Yeah. Step and turn greed. And little 
children don't get fed It's on the money changers' heads Greed, it feeds itself Greed, it becomes wealth Greed, it's not only the few Greed, it's even me and you Washington, Thomas Jefferson grew. They called it hemp, but actually, what by today's standards, it would be marijuana. Okay, and what's your source for that information? Well, for one, uh, I mean sources. I mean not just sources. Right. What did they grew it? No, or that the, you uh, about the 1960s hemp. Right, it was well. It was, According to the federal government, they were growing hemp back in the 40s. Is why I bring that up. Well, what they call hemp now and what they call hemp then is two different things. I see. Because in the 40s, in the 1940s, you couldn't, they didn't even know what made you get high off of marijuana. That wasn't, THC wasn't isolated and identified until the mid-60s. Yeah. And from there, that's when they started breeding the low THC plants. Right. Speaking of the 40s, have you seen any of the research on cancer where they made marijuana illegal in, what was it, 37 or something? And then the cancer rate started climbing exponentially. Yeah. It used to be part of our food chain. Yeah. I mean, uh, animals would eat it as part of part of their diet, and we would eat the, the meat of the animals, the, you know, drink the milk. And it was it was part of the food chain, and it's not so, it's something they've tried to take out of the food chain that's that, that makes us healthier. And like mad cow disease, it is actually created by feeding cattle back to the cattle. Yeah. It's a kind of um, <coughs> what, what cannibalism. Um, it's exactly. Cannibalism. Yeah, that's yeah. And so we're living in a time of solent green, more or less. And so instead of solent green, we're trying to go back to green technology, which is marijuana and healthy living and. Why do you suppose the government is rejecting this? Because the government is bought and paid for by the pharmaceutical industry. I mean, the pharmaceutical industry is one of the largest spenders of money on lobbying, which is basically just legal bribery. Right. So the pharmaceutical industry would be actually making the rules for farming because according to the Supreme Court, um, you did not use any tractors, any discs, any that was what, that's, that's what the lower any court heavy said. equipment. The, the lower court said that I wasn't farming. Yeah. That I wasn't, I didn't meet the definition of farming. And actually the lower courts, the judge in the lower court actually in his, I think it was like about a 14 page ruling or something, one of the first sentences, the, the very first thing he wrote on there was, Daniel Webster, you know, definition of farming, you know, was blah, 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 blah. And then the, the judge wrote, I doubt Daniel Webster was thinking about marijuana at the, when he wrote that. And it's like, you know, a, a 20 second Google search, it's like, you know what? I know for a fact that Daniel Webster wasn't thinking about marijuana when he wrote that because marijuana wasn't a word in the English language when Webster was alive. That's a very good point. 
but it very very well could have been thinking of cannabis because 20 years before Daniel Webster was born people could still get fined for not growing cannabis in what year was that 20 years before he uh, was born. I have to look. it was it, it was 20 years before he was born that you could still get fined for not growing cannabis so at one point the government would actually fine you for not growing what yes. we now know as marijuana. Yep. And now they're fining us for growing marijuana. Yep. Isn't that a little ridiculous? It's very ridiculous. And it makes you wonder sometimes what is going through their head. And it must be supporting the pharmaceutical It's not really what's industry. going through their head, it's what's going in their pockets. Going in their pockets. So when they said Daniel Webster did not define agriculture as what you were doing, Daniel Webster did not use tractors, did yeah. not use plows, did not use discs. Those weren't invented back then, right? Uh, plows, I think, were. The disc and everything else wasn't. Plows go back pretty far back in the... Oh, her horse drawn plows. Yeah. How many farmers are using horses these days? Not too many. So the judge's definition. <laughs> so the judge's definition of farming isn't exactly accurate, is it? No. Uh, like I said, I mean, the lower court denied my case based on, on you know, their reasoning was this, and the Missouri Supreme Court had a different reasoning. Other people have taken it, have had decisions in lower courts. I was mine was the first case to go to the Supreme Court, but others lower courts, you know, denied it for other reasons. It's like all the courts are denying it for different reasons, but they can't agree on the same reason. Correct. But the uh, they seem to forget that Missouri offers matching grants for greenhouses, which is pretty much what you have. Pretty much. Yeah, specialty plants they call it, not just farming. It's considered a type of farming, but not really traditional 40 acre farming true but uh there's places and there's places in the cities where they're doing indoor farming where they're uh in new york city a lot of these old empty warehouses are converting them to basically their indoor farms you're farming yes indoor farming which is pretty much greenhouses and good news is the uh, state of Missouri offers a matching greenhouse grant, so you could have got a thousand dollars for growing marijuana in your house if it was if it was uh, something else. Theoretically, yeah. If it was something else, you could have gotten a grant. Mm -hmm. Theoretically, but I mean, actually, the judge said too that the lower court judge said that you know marijuana isn't something that's you know that it's, it's harvested in the state of Missouri, which is. A lie. I mean, it's probably the most harvested crop in Missouri. But since it's illegal, they ignore the facts, which is wrong too. I mean, I mean, anything that's illegal, they can ignore. They can't perceive reality, even though, I mean, it's it's reality, but they just ignore it because, well, it's illegal, so it doesn't count. A lot of it is. I mean, the and the National Institute of Drug Addiction, I think, is what it's called. By law, they can't say anything good about cannabis. Yeah, you know they have. They're they're by by law they're biased. Yeah. I mean, you can't. So you, I mean, where's a government agency right there that's not going to tell you the truth because they're by law they're biased, which is wrong. They are biased. The DEA did say that marijuana did not harm anyone and never has harmed anyone, and that page now is missing. It's only a one page fact sheet on marijuana, the second page is missing where that had marijuana has never harmed anyone. They took that off probably per the president um, and everybody else against marijuana. So they don't want to tell the truth and it's becoming more and more evidence, evident that we've been lied to and... Well it was 1988 where someone took a... they were trying to get marijuana rescheduled under the uh, CSA and the chief administrative DEA judge Francis Young studied it for two years and in his ruling he said that there is 
no other known substance that is safer and more medicinally active than marijuana in its natural form. They're, what they're trying to do, they're trying to patent the plant and keep it away from the people so that, you know, they can just charge people, you know, whatever they can. I mean, uh, the new drug that you just rolled out, it's actually, the, I forget the name of it, the FDA just approved it. It's actually a derivative from marijuana plants, and for a year supply, it's like thirty-two thousand dollars. Yeah, THC or CBD. You know, for a plant that you can grow in your backyard. Yes. I and mean, it's it's ridiculous. Hemp plant too. Yeah. Yeah. No no THC in it, and yet the FDA is rolling out a CBD, and now CBD is being put off the shelves that's made from natural hemp. So what it is, is that the government is becoming a, a competitor to farming, or what? The government is just bought, is bought and paid for by the pharmaceutical companies. They basically, it's, they're, they're, they're big business and big pharmaceuticals lap boys. They do whatever they, the big business wants. I tried to buy American at Wally World this week. It made this man lonely, made this man weak. Don't you worry about your eating, don't you worry about your sleeping, don't you dare start complaining, don't you dare make a pee. Bad shit, bad shit, bad shit, bad shit, bad shit, bad shit, bad And I can bark and pay the taxes on my car. I'd have to walk, it's way too far. Now that's just wrong. Little ones of college found still the job I haven't found. Can't get my butt up off the ground. I ain't that strong. Bad shit, bad shit, bad shit, bad shit, bad shit, People in Washington aren't result representing the people. I mean, the latest poll showed that I think it was like 91 or I think it was 93 percent of the people polled thought that medical marijuana should be legal, and over 60 percent thought that voluntary use should be legal, and yet it's still they're still putting people in prison for it. They're putting people in prison for something that the majority of people think that shouldn't happen. And do you believe that your experience in marijuana farming would come in handy for the for the industry if Monsanto or someone took it over and you would be a scientist leading the industry? Do you think your experience would come in handy? No, I don't think my experience would come in handy with that. I mean, I can. I'm not. I'm not college educated with all the plant and husbandry and stuff. I know how to do it. I'm like I'm. I'm like a big. I was like a big gardener. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm not, I wasn't the industrial, you know, where you, there's a lot into the, I know enough to know that I don't know a lot about yeah. that part of it. I, I know a lot about 
cannabis in general. But you were given four months in prison for raising 300 plants. Yeah. I mean, the whole justice system is not about justice. I mean, people do their, I mean, people shouldn't go to, the reason people should go to prison is to protect the public. By me going to prison, who is being protected? Nobody except the prison industry profits. And the pharmaceutical industry. And the pharmaceutical industry profits. They got rid of one of their competitors. Yeah. For only four months in jail. And how much cost to your people, of, I mean, how much should that that there was trials cost the people that put me in jail cost in Missouri I don't know what it actually costs the state of Missouri to keep somebody in prison but while I was in prison my retina detached I had three operations courtesy of the state I'm now blind in my left eye for all practical purposes so I'm sure it's easy to say for them to put me in prison for four months to protect the public from plants cost the state probably close to about a quarter million dollars. $250,000. I would, I would guess, that would be what my guess. You know, three operations, plus all the drugs and, you know, keeping me in prison and everything. I'm, I'm sure it's well over $200,000. For basically illegal farming. For illegal farming. Yeah. Which, I mean, those two words should not ever go together. No. That's kind of like almost like illegal breathing. Do you believe that one of these days they're going to require farmers to be licensed? It's really hard to say what's going to happen because the country's really turning really fascist, in my opinion. I mean, it's a free country. They call it a free country, yet it's a country that puts takes the freedom away from more people than any other country in the world. So how can it be a free country? I mean, you need a license for just about everything. I could, you know, I mean, how much longer is it going to be before you need a license to have a, a child? I mean, that's kind of where it's going. You're going to need a license to, you know, you're going to have to pay the government to go to the bathroom. Is there anything else that you'd want to add in the video that no one else has ever said? that you want the Missouri people to know? Cannabis, cannabis is not only mankind, they think cannabis is mankind's very first agricultural crop. And it's for a reason, it's because in its natural form it is just so productive. There was a study done by a couple of, I think they were uh, botanists or something, some kind of scientist, and it was published in Notre, Notre Dame by it was published by Notre Dame University. These scientists they counted the seed production from uncultivated wild growing cannabis. They called it hemp by law it'd be marijuana. Just on the seeds alone they estimated and this is an estimate on average that if you press these seeds if you had an acre of this crop and you press pressed oil out of the seeds, you'd get 300 gallons of seed oil per acre. Nothing we produce, nothing that's grown today produces more than 120 gallons of seed oil per acre. And then one of the unique things about cannabis seed oil is it converts to biodiesel at a 95 plus percent ratio. The really interesting thing about that study is if you just extrapolate the highest yielding plot, because you would think a, you would think the American farmer would be able to at least match the highest yielding plot of something growing naturally, wouldn't you? Yes. You extrapolate the highest yielding plot, that average per acre comes out to over 2,000 gallons of oil per acre. If Missouri planted just 20% of its farmland for the production of cannabis seeds for seed oil, that would be approximately 20 billion gallons of oil every year that we would grow out of the ground. So in other words, the farmers would actually be growing their own fuel. Farmers could actually be self-sufficient. They could grow their own fuel, they could press the seeds on the farm and convert it to biodiesel for their tractors and whatever electricity they need for their generators. They could make their own biodiesel on the farm. 
One other thing, something that most people, a lot of people don't know. THC is actually less toxic than water. I'm not talking like the water in Flint, Michigan, which is like very toxic. I'm talking about regular pure water. It's Approximately diet, six though. liters of water will kill you drinking it. You would need approximately, well, you need over 100 pounds of pure, pure THC, and you'd have to ingest that in less than a half an hour for THC to kill you. And how many liters of water again? Six. Six to eight liters of water would kill you. Six liters of water consumed within an hour is enough to kill the average person. The FDA knows. The DEA in 1974, they commissioned the University of Virginia. They wanted proof that marijuana was bad for you, how, how it, you know, it, it impacted your immune system. What they found out was, hey, it actually kills cancer. And when they found out, when they got the results were exactly the opposite of what they wanted, they tried to bury the evidence. If that tells you anything about our government. In other words, you're pro-cancer. Could be. And that if, you would look, be. if you look at the history, you could say our government is very pro-death. So from birth, they want us born pro-life so that they can start charging parents and then the kids and make money from us all our lives and then in the very end they want us to die young before we collect any social security and then keep the social security from themselves pretty much in the meantime we'll go overseas and kill people in other countries population control war, war for profit that's what made America great so the government isn't really as, as, as responsible as they pretend that. Oh, they're real responsible. They just don't, they're just not, they just don't care about the people. They're responsible to the 1%. The covert thing that they're doing is they're, oh, they're denying firearms to people that have marijuana cards. Yeah. So essentially those are people that are taken out of the fight if we're ever invaded so instead of a weapon behind every blade of grass there's one behind every 40 acres now the way i see it the federal government is going to have to legalize cannabis on the federal level they, they, they almost have to otherwise you're just going to lose all credibility i mean they pretty much lost all credibility now with it being a Schedule One drug. I mean, I don't see how they can say that it has no medicinal benefits when the government themselves hold patents on medicinal applications of marijuana. I and mean, they're, they're going to have to legalize it. When they legalize it on the federal level, the whole you can't own firearms is, will go away because the reason why medical marijuana card holders can't have firearms is because if you hold a medical marijuana card now, you're saying, hey, I use an illicit substance. And if you use an illicit substance, you can't own a firearm legally. But you can get drunk and go out on the Oh, table, definitely. Right? You can go out, you can tap, pop some pills, drink a fifth of Jack, and you know, you're, you're, you're fine. You know, strap your AR-15 in your back and your, your magnum in your, you know, in your holster and go walk down the street, you're fine. Stagger down the street. And stagger down the street, yeah. And you're still you know, working as a waiter, or no? Actually, I'm working in a factory now. Okay. Uh, I run a. With my the way it is, it's really hard to do that job anymore. Okay. Because my depth perception. So now I'm. Uh, because of the eye problems. Yeah. And that's from prison that the taxpayers yes. had to. I was hit. Yeah, I was hit in the eye by somebody. And it was approximately a week, ten days later, or something. My retina detached. And when I went and told them about it, they waited three days before they took me to see a doctor. So a a non-violent marijuana grower put in with violent criminals. He was. He had. So he had. I don't. Know, I don't know if he. He wasn't in there for a violent offense, but. He had anger issues. So Definitely. violent. Yeah. 
and they knew this pretty much yeah well you sound like you've got a phd <laughs> i've i've kind of like you know president lincoln i'm self-educated if anyone had any questions to ask you is there any way they could contact you I'm always on Facebook. They can always look me up on Facebook. And how do you spell your last name? It's S-H-A-N-K-L-I-N. And it's Mark Shanklin. Mark Shanklin. It's very, it's been a real pleasure to talk to you. So the moral of the story is uh, have fun, go fishing, play music, and don't take life so seriously. And be nice to your friends. Gotcha. <laughs> If you don't be nice to people, they won't be nice to you. Well, I found that out. <laughs> you gotta have a drink of this coffee. It looks like good coffee. Uh, it's uh, instant. Oh, some instant, some good coffee. Yeah, I'm. I'm I like it. It's, I like the instant myself, you know. Of course, my favorite coffee, though, really, believe it or not, is McDonald's. <laughs> oh, did McDonald's Corporation hear that? Rocket Belly Hall of Fame, Delbert Delmac McKinnon, prefers McDonald's coffee. Well, they got some good coffee, man. That's on record. Yeah. I'd say it is. Yeah. Of course, they, they a lot of good coffee. Coffee is just good. Yeah. <laughs> so how are you doing these days um, as far as your home and as far as your lifestyle and everything else? Is there anything you need? Well, there's a lot I need, but I ain't going to worry about it. Yeah. Just going to carry on. Carry on. Can. Keep moving on. on my car, I'd have to walk, it's way too far, now that's just wrong, little ones are college bound, still the job I haven't found, can't get my butt up off the ground, I ain't that strong! <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 